Perhaps you've noticed I've been talking a lot about harmony lately, and specifically been getting into non-functional harmony, which is something that maybe you're not quite as familiar with, and some of you thought was really weird, and that makes sense because a lot of us aren't familiar with it. And I got a really interesting comment. They said, I don't know how learning about tone rows is going to help me write and produce the music that I want to make. So today I thought I would try that very thing. I'm going to make a tone row and see if I can create an entire piece, an entire track out of it. And by the end, I hope I end up with something like this. First of all, what is a tone row and how can we use it to make an entire piece of music that people might actually want to listen to? Well, we're not going to go full Schoenberg today, but we are going to use his techniques, at least the main concepts of his techniques. You may have heard this referred to as serialism, and that just comes from the fact that it is a series of pitches, tones, and in Schoenberg's case, he would cycle all the way through all 12 chromatic pitches before ever repeating one of them. I'm going to loosely hold to that law, but there might be some repetition uh, just for the sake of making this a bit more palatable to those of you who are less familiar with this kind of thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ease you into this and, and cook you like a frog. I do live near Louisiana. I think they do that kind of thing down there. So the tone row itself that we're going to use to extract the chord progressions, the melodies, pretty much everything from in this piece sounds like this. That is a nine pitches that I've created so far with none of them repeating. So I don't have to use all 12 pitches. I can use any number of pitches that I want and I could invert this. I could play it backwards. I could play it backwards and inverted. I could do a number of things to extract chords or more material from it. And the way that I get those chords is through the use of something called breaking it into cells. So if I take just the first four notes of that row, I could rearrange those into a vertical, into a chord. What if I took the next four notes? So those are my first two chords. That would actually be my next chord if I were going to be really strict about this, but I think I'm going to alter the deal a bit. Go back here so that when I shift to this last chord, it sounds kind of striking and kind of harmonically fresh. And that's a lot of what non-functional harmony is all about, is moving to these unexpected places that don't seem predictable, but do seem inevitable. Big difference. So altogether, that sort of altered serialism chord progression that I got loosely based on this tone row sounds like this. I could repeat it with some variation, and I'm going to change the last chord just to make it go somewhere different the second time. One of my favorite things to do is to take a progression like this that is born out of a very harmonically rich place and then strip it down so that we're not using all of the notes of every chord every time. So I might arpeggiate it to sound something like this and leave certain notes of the chord out. Maybe something like... Ooh, I like that. Let's do it. What 
if we added a base? Let's give that some negative filter amount. So that way when I play the note, the filter is gonna close. And as soon as I release, it's going to open back up. I'm recording MIDI along with the audio, so I can always dial this in later. What I would like to do is create a melodic idea over the top of that. And I'm just gonna play some sort of variation on the tone rope. And I'm gonna play around with different rhythms and different ways of arranging it over those chords, those arpeggios that I've created. And that's gonna give me a lot of different options for coming up with a melody here. I could also try the inverted tone row or the retrograde tone row over the top of these chords they might work with varying degrees of success, and I get to choose what I like the best depending on my taste. I don't really like that because the road sound is too similar to the iridium sounds that I'm using. So let's just pull in something else. That's pretty cool. Maybe a little over the top, but let's try it and see what happens. I could massage this around a bit more and make it really work, I think. But before I do that, I would think I would like to come up with some kind of a sequence that will kind of be tonally fixed enough to provide some sort of stability for this kind of meandering, elusive chord progression that I've got going on because it is so tonally ambiguous. I always come back to the D, so it's kind of circling around D minor, but it's non-functional, so it doesn't stay there. There are chords outside of D minor as well. It's the beauty of non-functional harmony. So let's create a sequence, just a MIDI sequence, that fits over all this other stuff. I'm gonna mute the melody. Really like the way that the sub 37 reacts in duophonic mode. Something like that. I think it's what I want to go on. And then I'm going to show you something that I've been doing lately with a lot of my sequences. And you can create almost like a generative thing by, by having two sequencers going at the same time. And they sort of fight with each other. But if you're careful with your harmonies, which is what we're talking about, then you can get away with it. And it actually provides some really interesting, unexpected sometimes results that usually work in interesting ways and then usually inspire me to do interesting things around them, which is one of the biggest things that I'm looking for with the technology. So I'm just gonna record that simple sequence in just the MIDI. found it right at the end there. It's usually happens. Let's just listen to that together with all the other stuff we've got going on, minus the melody. And then I'm going to kick in this, which is the Stepic sequencer, which I've just been experimenting around with. And I came up with kind of a cool sequence in D minor uh, that should work and should do interesting things with the MIDI that I just programmed as well. Stepping by itself sounds like this. Now 
not to bring in the MIDI. So you can hear the MIDI that I've programmed in, that I've played in, and the MIDI coming from Stepic fighting with each other in, in really interesting ways. And I love that. I love combining sequencers, basically, so that they produce interesting results. And that's something that I've been doing quite a bit lately. Maybe I'll make another video just on that. I'm going to bring back in, first of all, I'm going to take out some of the low end. It's not doing a lot down there other than just some trash anyway. And then I'm going to bring the melody. What I think we have so far is the beginnings of something that I could continue to develop into a track, into a finished piece of music. And that's the whole point of all of this, I'm pretty sure. That and making me learn how to use Cubase again. All right, let's do it. We've got something to work with now, something kind of exciting that was born out of a really harmonically rich place using a tone rope. And I don't think it's too outlandish. <laughs> I really think that this is pretty palatable to most people. This is not going to scare people away. And yet it does kind of stretch the ear just a little bit. And I think that's what I really want to do with my music is invite people in so that it has an emotional impact the first time you hear it. And then the second and the third and the fourth times that you listen to it and you dig deeper, you find that there's a lot of substance there because it's from a very harmonically rich place. This is when it gets really fun to me, when we have some toys in the playpen, some things to play with that are really strong. Then we get to do all the stuff that makes composition what it is, putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together. If you want to learn more about my philosophies on harmony, I go much deeper and with more examples in a free ebook guide that I made. That'll be in the description down below. It's the first link. I'm going to play around with this idea some more, and I think there might be a future release here or something. Who knows?